Welcome back to So You Got Your First Base. If you haven't checked out the first part of my video, um, click on right here. I'm going to send you into there. Click there. It'll send you to that first part of the video. It'll take you through exploring your first base, going through all the first curiosities that you find uh, before you buy a base or after you have your first base. It's kind of generally aimed towards that. But now we're going to look at tuning and we're going to look at actually hands-on things with your instrument. And what can you do now that you get your first base? Where can you start off? The first place you start off is tuning. Now around my body, I'm going to place a bunch of places that you can click to go to different tunings that I've set. These tunings are a little bit more advanced, meaning that they're going to be something other than standard tuning. And I don't think that you should be playing anything outside of standard tuning until you get a little bit more experience playing songs. It gets a little bit more complicated reading music, gets a little bit more complicated on the way the notes work, and you kind of tend to get confused when you're reading things in drop tunings, when you're reading things that are just not in standard tuning. So keep everything in standard tuning and I'm going to teach you how to tune your bass to standard. There are a few ways that you can do this. When you have your bass, you can either buy a separate tuner, which could be a smaller tuner, which is not chromatic. It can just be one that can go to standard tuning. It can be a chromatic tuner, which can reach any note or flats. It could be a pedal. It can be a rack mount tuner, but I doubt you're going to have a rack mount tuner at this stage of the game. So you're probably going to be having a smaller tuner. Now, if you don't have a tuner, you can tune using a piano, using a guitar, anything that has standard tuning of of E, something that's that's tuned to E. This does require you to tune using your ear. You have to use your ear, you have to use listening capabilities to match what you've got on your instrument and what they've got on their instrument. So if somebody hits an E on a piano or somebody hits an E on a guitar or so or they strike an E on a guitar or if somebody sings an E, anything like that, you're gonna have to match it using your ear. While this is a good trick to do, this is something that you should learn eventually, it might not be the best thing to do for accuracy purposes. You're probably gonna want to get a, a tuner that could run from fifteen dollars to two hundred dollars depending on what kind of tuner that you have. So what you want to do first is tune this thickest string and I'm going to strike each one of my strings uh, so that you can match mine. But you want to tune the thickest one, which is closest to you, to E. This is going to be this is an E note. This is going to take you to E, and it's gonna it's gonna be a bottom E. Okay. Then you want to tune the next note, the next string, which is uh, string three and you want to tune that to A. I have a bit of fret buzz on my bass, that's fine. And you want to tune the string after that, which is string 2, to D. And then the last string, the highest string, which is string 1, you tune that to G. If you have absolutely no way of getting a tuner, if you have just, just no way of uh, access to anything that tunes a piano, anything like that, then when you go back to the, my video, Try to match your strings with mine, at least the E string. Take the first string that I struck when I struck the, the thickest string, which was an E, listen to my video, and listen to your instrument and try to match both the sounds. You might want to hook up to an amp first so you can hear the bass itself, then strike the string, tune it up or down to match exactly what I have on the video. Then use the next trick I'm going to show you, which is also tuning by ear, is hitting the fifth fret of the E string. When you hit the fifth fret of the E string, which is the thickest string, it makes an A note. Now the A note is the note right after the E. So the fifth string of the E, what if the fifth fret of the E when you strike it, matches the open A. So when you strike the fifth fret of the E, it's the same note as a string below it, or at least where it's supposed to be. So what you can do is strike the 5th fret of the E and then take the A string and tune it up or down until it, it matches your A. Right now I'm going to tune, I, I have it all out of tune. So if you hit the 5th fret of the E and you have the open A, 
it's two different notes, uh, the A is out of tune. So what I do is, the A is below, so I need to tune it up. Now you won't be able to get your tuning as fast as I just did because I didn't go too far down and you might be somewhere completely different from where I was and I've been doing this for a long time. So when you practice, you'll be able to tune your string by ear as fast as possible if you get that first string in tune. You won't be able to get the first string in tune by ear until you've been playing for an even longer amount of time where you can actually say that, oh, that's an E note, and I can actually tune up and down, and you can get to the E and do the rest of your strings that way, but we're not that far yet. So that fifth fret open next string principle lies on all the strings. So the fifth fret of the E is the open A, the fifth fret of the A is the open D, the fifth fret of the D is the open G. And because you're a bass player, you don't have a fourth, meaning you don't have to tune using the fourth fret to get the B string that comes after the G on a guitar. So that's kind of something that you can make fun of guitars for if they're in the same stage that you are in their instrument journey. So what you want to do is you want to be able to get your strings to E, A, D, and G. No matter how you do it, whether you get to match with mine, you do it by ear, or ideally you use a, a tuner, how expensive, doesn't matter as long as it's a tuner because all tuners will take you to standard tuning no matter what. It's the lower and higher tunings that, that kind of get a little messed, messed up on when it comes to which type of tuner you need to buy. So get it to that tuning first and what it'll do is it'll get you to where you need to begin so you can start playing songs, so you can start writing things, so you can start getting an idea of where the notes are. And I have, an, I have a lesson for where the notes are actually if you click right here it'll take you to the lesson for every single note on the neck of the bass. So what it'll, it'll start with is the first fret all the way down to the last fret, and it'll teach you a way to remember, like you remember the alphabet, to remember every single note on the bass to get that completely figured out. Meaning not only will you be able to read tab music, or not only will you be able to tell what note it is, but you'll be able to go along with chords. If somebody gives you a sheet and say, these are the guitar chords for a song, and you'll see G, and you'll see A, and E minor, and you'll see all these chords, by learning the notes on the bass, you'll be able to get the root notes for every single one of those chords and follow the guitar while they play, which is really cool because you can sit there and be like, okay, you're playing a G, an E, and an A. No matter if it's minor or major, you just need to know that first note. So you can start off playing as like, oh, well, this is a G. This is an E, A. And while they're playing their notes on their chords on guitar, you can follow along using your string plucks and be able to join any guitarist. So it gets you a really good place to at least tune your bass up first, learning the notes on the instrument before you excel any further on playing songs or learning how to play songs. So you've got your bass to tuned to standard. You've got E, A, D, G completely down. You want to explore other tunings. You hear people say drop D and drop C, and you hear B standard and A standard. You see all these different types of tunings, and a lot of the songs that you want to play are in these different types of tunings. Well, how do you get to these tunings? What do you do? What are they for? Again, like I did earlier in my video, I'm going to place a, a couple places around my head that you can click on, and it'll take you to lessons that will teach you how to tune to these different types of tunings. So you can click on any one of those to see exactly how to get to a certain tuning, or you can come back to this part of the video to see which one that you want to go to. But when you're trying to look at different types of tuning, when you're, look, when you're exploring a wider range of music, you usually want to be able to go lower, or you want to be able to go higher on any instrument. You want to, on a bass, of course, go lower than the standard E, A, D, G. When somebody's playing something in drop B, you want to be in a different set of strings. You want to be in B, E, A, D for B standard. You want to be in B, F sharp, B, all these different types of tunings that'll match the guitars. So let's say you're trying to play a song by Slipknot. Slipknot tunes to drop B. Uh, they tune to drop A. Sometimes um, some of their basses are tuned to B standard. So when you're trying to play all these different songs, you're not going to be able to play them on a standard tuned bass. You're going to have to get to these different tunings using different strings or using a different type of method um, shown on one of those videos that I could link you to earlier. What you want to do is be able to get lower. Right now, you're able to reach a tuning where you're, let's say, in standard, E, A, D, G, and you can play something which is like... play random things like that, that's about as low as you can get. You can get about as low as the E string. Okay, but let's say you want to go lower. You want a, a note that sounds even lower than the than the thickest string that you've got. And of course, let's say you start out on a four string. If you've got a five string, you can go lower. If you want to go lower, you can tune to drop D. I've got my bass in drop D right now, which I've just tuned to, and you can reach 
notes that are lower than E. This is the original E, which is on the seventh fret now. But now you can play notes. Which you originally could not get to. A lot of times when guitarists, they play in drop D, they like to play a lot of heavier things. Lamb of God is all in drop D. Um, and you're playing all these heavier licks where you're chugging along on the first to about fifth frets. Those notes can't be reached on E standard tuning. You have to tune lower to, to be able to get the bass notes for what they're doing. Of course, you can substitute those for higher notes, but the point of a bass guitar isn't to go any higher, it's to go lower, is to be octaves lower than the actual guitars or any kind of melody that's going on, the piano, to achieve a foundation. So your goal is to generally be lower. So anything that is tuned to drop B or drop D or anything below standard, you are going to want to match that tuning so you can match the same type of low notes. If the guitars are going from standard to drop D or below, they're tuning their guitars lower. So you want to tune your bass lower to match what they're doing to get an even lower note of uh, range of notes, of course, to match what they're trying to play. If you play something in standard that is played in drop B in the same frets that you would in drop B, then you're going to be playing way too high and the notes are going to be completely off. Because something in standard and something in drop tuning are two different things. Standard is one right after the next, which is the fifth fret thing that I told you earlier in the video, which is E, A, D, G. On drop D, or drop or any kind of drop tuning, is the first of any standard, the first string of any standard, tune one step lower than the rest of the strings, meaning it doesn't correspond anymore. That means you can hold power chords on a guitar using only one finger. That means you can do many different things. So when you tune something in drop tuning, you're not going to be able to play it in standard tuning. You're going to have to tune down. And like I mentioned earlier in this part of the video, you can click on how to get to each drop tuning for each song that you've learned. The basis of everything is, all you have to do is look at the song that you're trying to play. If you're trying to play a song in drop B, look up a video that I probably put up or anywhere else on YouTube on how to get to drop B on your instrument and tune down to drop B, then get onto the song that you're trying to li uh, listen to or play, listen to the song, then try to learn how to play the song. Get on tab, however you're gonna do it, but tune down first. And that's why you have to tune down. You don't really have a choice when you're very high up on the list when the guitarists are going down. Tabs or tablature. What is it? What does it do? Does it help people? How do you learn how to play it? Tablature is probably one of the most useful resources that any instrumentalist can know, even drummers. A tab can basically give you a general idea of where the song is headed, how the song is played, or what frets to hit, simply to get a chord of a song or to get anything out of a song or to get a good starting point. A lot of people think that beginners are the only people that should be reading tab and that you should eventually move to sheet music. While that might be true for some things, it's not true for everything. I still use tabs to this day, and I write my own music, which I don't tab at all. So tabs are generally given to you as a reference point after a while. So it goes from something that you rely on 100% all the way to something that you can just look at and say, all right, that's basically what it is. Get out of it, then get the rest of it by ear. Now, normally you want to start out by using tabs completely. You want to use them 100% to learn every single song that you try to play, if you are going to use the route of tablature. If you are taking bass lessons and you are given the route of sheet music altogether, then you should probably choose that route as your normal method of learning how to basically get the general information of how to learn a song. Tabs are generally made so that when you are a beginner bass player, you're trying to teach yourself how to play, or a beginner guitarist, and you're trying to teach yourself a song, basic songs, you get a very good reference point without having to learn how to read sheet music. It's probably one of the coolest things that you can probably learn, and it's one of the easiest things to do when it comes to playing music. A tab to get is online. Anywhere you look, you'll see tabs in books, you'll see tabs given to you by other musicians that have written their own music, but generally when you look for tabs, you can go online. And I get questions on my videos, where to find tabs? Where do you find tabs? Where do you find tabs? And the answer is ultimateguitar.com. I'm gonna link you to Ultimate Guitar in the description. Go there and you can search tabs for almost any song you can think of for bass or guitar and even drums sometimes. I get mine from Ultimate Guitar. You can go to 911 tabs. You can go to a bunch of different sites. Just Google tablatures and you'll find many sites that'll take you to tabs. So it's really good to learn how to tab. I'm going to get to how you can do it. The first thing when you look at tab is going to be a bunch of lines with dashes. Lines made out of dashes, basically. And what they're going to do is they're going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. They're going to be stacked when you're looking at a bass tab. Uh, sometimes 5, uh, sometimes 6 for guitars, but I'm going to be generally focusing on 4. So 4 lines of tab. Now what does it mean? When you look at a bass from where, from where you're sitting, if you're sitting like I am with a bass guitar, you're looking at it generally upside down. You're looking at a bass like this. 
So when a tab is read, it's read upside down. The top highest part, the top, is going to be the bottom string, the one that's closest to the floor. And the thickest one is going to be the one closest to you, which is the thickest string, which is E. It's going to be the bottom one on the tab listing. Basically, you read it upside down. You read it one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. That way, you won't be confused on how it's played. Now, a tab is pretty straightforward. It's going to have a number corresponding to a number on the fret. And the first thing you need to learn is what zero means. People say, well, I have the first fret and I have all these 20s right here. And what does zero mean? Does that mean that I hold you know, past the nut? No, zero means open. It means you just hit the string open. Anytime it says zero on any one of those strings, it just means hit the string open. So if it says zero on the A string, then just hit it open. Other than that, anything that's masked out is perfectly straightforward. If it says 0, 1, 3, 4, 4 on the A string, then it's just simple. Now, of course, the rhythm and the beats per minute, all that varies on the song that you really want to play. So once you look at all the numbers on the tab itself, you're going to want to listen to the song that you're trying to learn and see when these notes are hit. So now you know it tells me to hit the 1 on the A and the 3 on the E and then the 5 on the D and it tells me to do all these different things and it tells me to play it all these different ways. But when do I have to hit these notes differently? You don't just play the one over and over until you see the five because they're not going to give you the exact rhythm. You have to go into the song, listen to the song, and then try to play along the way that you learn how to, how to read the tab along with the song. So what you do is sit down with the tab by itself, go through your bass, go through the notations. And I'll tell you to do all these different things, and then you're like, well, that doesn't really sound right. That doesn't sound like how the song goes. So what you do is you go into the song, listen to it, and then you start playing along. You're like, okay, it starts with the one. Oh, okay, now it's jumping in. And what it'll do, it'll go, it'll, you'll be like, okay, the rhythmically, that's what makes sense. These are the notes I have to hit. This is how I have to hit them. So it's a two-part thing. You survey the tab first. You get onto the tab system. You survey it. You listen to the song way beforehand, but you you look at the tab, you look at every number that it wants you to hit, you, you just go through your bass instrument and be like, okay, it wants me to hit the one, and then it wants me to go to three, and it wants me to, okay, you go through that whole list, then you open up the song, and then you listen to it, play it simultaneously, then go into your tab, and then try to match where they want you to play these notes. That way you can learn exactly how to play the song. A third step that you can do if you're having any trouble or something for reference is go on YouTube and look for covers. If you look for bass covers or guitar covers for any song, usually you'll find them, depending on how famous the song is, but usually you'll find them. And what you'll do is you click on one of them, watch how they play the song. Uh, of course, you don't want them to, to get it wrong if you can get a, a pretty high-rated video. Watch how they play the song, and you'll see that they're hitting the notes just like the tabs sing, sometimes a little different because some notes can be replicated differently, but they'll hit the notes generally like what the tab is saying at these different intervals of time. So you can match what they're playing using the notes that you just read on the tab, but using how they're hitting the strings. So you get to get the system of how do you learn a song, of how you at least got to the end of how you can play the song along with the actual song that you listen to. When you get onto the YouTube and you look up covers, you look a few of them up. Don't just look up one cover and then say, oh, this is how you play the song. Look up that one, look up another one. Like You'll probably see a list of different bass covers or guitar covers for that single song. Look up a bunch of them as much as you can and watch each one of them and you'll see similarities between every single one of them and be like, okay, now I know how they know how to play the song and you try to replicate what they're doing. If you can find a lesson, a bass lesson or a guitar lesson, you're, you're in even better hands. Then what you can do is you can sit and like, okay, well, this is how you play it and they'll teach you how to play the whole song without even reading the tab. And so you'll get a different method of, of how to learn a song. When it comes to writing music though, and you can write tab, you'll be able to not only read it, but you'll be able to write it. You'll be able to replicate it. Like, okay, I wrote this tune that is, uh, that is two, four, zero. So it's like. You're like, okay, I wrote that in my head one time. I like that. So you write that on the tab, you write down E, A, D, and G, and then on the A, you write, you type 2, then 4, then 0. 
and then you'll be able to write your own tab. So not only will you be able to read it, you'll be able to write it. The last thing when it comes to tabs is symbols. You'll be encased with these different types of symbols. Uh, some of them are slides, some of them are hammer-ons and pull-offs, some of them can, can mean accents, all these different things. I'm going to talk to you about three that you're going to need to know. Three are probably the biggest type of tabs or types of symbols that come to tabs that you're going to encounter when you're trying to read tab. The first is slide. Slide is just a bunch of slash marks. Doesn't matter which way they go because when you slide from five to seven, you're always sliding up. When you slide from 10 to three, you're always sliding down. It just depends on which number is first. If three is first and you're sliding to anything higher than three, then you're always sliding up. So it doesn't matter what kind of slash marks they use. As long as they use slash marks, they mean slide. So when it says three slash 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 or just one slash seven on the E or any string, then it means you start on the three and you slide to the seven. Okay, you just slide up. If it says slide from 10 down to three, it says 10 slide, slide, slide three on any one of the strings, I'm gonna choose the A, then, it's, then you just start at the 10, slide on the three. Pretty simple, right? You just slide to whichever ones they tell you to slide to. Another one that's really important is hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, hammer-on, which is something like this, is just plucking a note using your pinky to hammer on, hammering on to another note without plucking. So let's say it tells you to pluck the five and hammer on to six. It's as simple as that. Pull-offs are going from any note lower. Let's say you hammer on from seven to nine. A pull-off is just that pull-off. So you, you, you went from seven, hammer up to nine, then you pull off back to seven without plucking at all. So watch. It's about as simple as that. So you start at a, you just hammer on, which is an H, then you pull off, which is a P. So just simple. The last one is a tilde, which is, an, which is an accent in the Spanish language, but a tilde usually just means to hold a note. The last thing that you'll see on any song, if let's say the song ends off on an E, it just goes like bam, and that's going to be the end of the song. It's going to have a zero, and it's going to have a tilde. Or let's say that you're playing a part of the note where you play like whole notes, where it's like, okay, you have to hold off the, until all four beats are made, or whatever the time signature is. You just start out with three. All you gotta do is hit the note and hold it instead of just hitting it and letting go. Hit the note and hold it. That's just all it means, to hold the note. So tabs are gonna be very important when it comes to learning any types of songs or when it comes to starting a reference point. A tab either is something that you learn fully by just looking at it and listening to music or you use it as a reference point. But it's used by both intermediate and uh, beginners and actually advanced players. I've seen advanced bassists use tabs as well. An easy way of communicating to the rest of the people that don't know how to read sheet music and an easy way to learn songs. So if you guys have any questions on tabs, because I still get questions on those, please ask me. I've linked you to the description of where I get my tabs and a good place to actually find your own tabs. Look at the ratings on the tabs to see which ones are good or bad. Five stars, of course, is good. One star, don't even look at it. But just check out the best you can. Look at covers, look at lessons, and probably watch this video for some reference. But that's how you learn how to play songs by tabs.